Earlier today, I was wasting some time on Instagram and just kind of scrolling through my feed. And I saw a particular post by an account that I follow that I'm a big fan of called The Daily Stoic. If you've been following my work for a while, if you've been following this channel for a while, certainly if you have any experience with my online courses, you know that I'm a big fan of Stoic philosophy. And I found Stoic philosophy enormously valuable when helping people overcome retroactive jealousy, when helping people overcome jealousy, and in my own life as well, I'm a big fan of Stoic philosophy. In today's video, I'm gonna share this post by The Daily Stoic, and I'm gonna share eight ways that will help you overcome retroactive jealousy inspired by Stoic philosophy. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy, overcome obsessive jealousy, and save their relationships. If you'd like more information about me and my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. Okay, to start things off, I'll just read the post to you, and then I'm gonna analyze each of these points one by one and relate them specifically to retroactive jealousy. So the post is called Eight Ways to Find Peace. Don't suffer imagined troubles. Accept your own mortality. Remember whose opinion matters. Schedule stillness in your life. Find the beauty in everyday life. Take the view from above. Live by a code and reflect often. Okay, so point number one, don't suffer imagined troubles. How many of our troubles inspired by retroactive jealousy are actually troubles? How much of this stuff is really, truly important? How much of our, again, our troubles in air quotes are really made up nonsense in our head that bears no resemblance to the current reality? How much of our troubles in our head, how much of this is self-created, self-imposed, this self-imposed prison of intrusive thoughts, of nonsense that we're carrying around with us all day? How easy it can be to lose perspective on these troubles, to make these troubles far worse than they actually are, to assign and ascribe significance and meaning to certain events from our partner's past, certain intrusive thoughts, that really is completely inaccurate, that is completely illusory, that serves no real purpose, making a mountain out of a molehill. Point number two, accept your own mortality. You are going to die. I am going to die. Your partner is going to die. A big reason, one of the central reasons why I'm still so interested in this topic of retroactive jealousy, why I'm still doing this work after so many years, after so many coaching calls, when there are so many potential other areas that I could be exploring in more depth, one of the reasons I'm so drawn to this issue is because I abhor wasted time, wasted opportunities. I look back on my life as a younger man and I look at all of the time that I wasted worrying about things that didn't matter, stressing about people, frankly, who didn't matter, struggling with my then girlfriend's past when it was really completely useless, completely futile. I think about all the nights that I wasted with her when I could have been enjoying her company. And instead I was wrestling with all these self-created demons that really served no purpose. All this time that was wasted, because here's the reality. I'm never gonna get my late teens, early twenties back. Those years are gone, that time is gone. I can make all of the money in the world if I want to. I can do anything. But the one thing that I can never do and that you can never do is reclaim lost time. I reflect on my own mortality all the time and it's so important, I think. It's such a key component in living a good life. In the West, you know, I'm Canadian, so I'll speak from a, you know, air quotes, Western perspective. But in the West, we have a really interesting relationship with death, with mortality. We don't like to mention it. We don't like to think about it. Out of sight, out of mind. If you bring up this topic, people accuse you of being morbid, right? We can't be morbid. When in reality, the fact that we are going to die and our loved ones will die, and eventually this party will come to an end, this is all we know for sure in life. So I don't want you to waste time with retroactive jealousy. I regret my own sense of wasted time. And through overcoming retroactive jealousy, I really made a pledge to consider my mortality more often, to consider it every day if I can. Accepting my mortality is one of the key components, I believe, in keeping retroactive jealousy at bay long-term, frankly, and just in general, living a happier, more peaceful life. Point number three, remember whose opinion matters. I get a lot of emails from retroactive jealousy sufferers, particularly men, I must say, you know, getting this particular email, guys who write to me saying, I'm worried what other people will think of my girlfriend. I'm worried about what other guys might think of my wife. I'm worried how my partner's ex might see my partner. I can't stand thinking about this stuff. Okay, whose opinion matters in this scenario, really? 
Does your opinion matter of your partner? Or does some random bozo from years ago, does his opinion matter? Sometimes people wonder, you know, how I can deal with being the retroactive jealousy guy, in air quotes, for so long, putting my name and face on this issue for so long, because I get hate. Of course I get nasty comments and guys calling me names and, and nasty emails and you're this and you're that and all these things. And people wonder like, why doesn't this stuff bother you more? I'll tell you why. Because hate never comes from above. Some random idiot posting a stupid YouTube comment. Number one, I probably won't read it. Number two, do I really want to trade places with that guy? The guy calling me a cuck or... <laughs> whatever. Do I really want to trade places with that guy? Is that a happy guy who's typing this comment on his computer, who's leaving this nasty comment, who's saying these bad things about me? No, I don't think that's a very happy human being. I've never posted, I don't think, yeah, I've never posted a nasty YouTube comment in my entire life. The men and women I respect have done the same. Who is actually posting this stuff? I'm guessing people who are not so happy with their lot in life. So think about this the next time you're concerned about the opinion of other people. Do you really value and respect those people? Are these people who you want to emulate in certain respects? Are they worthy of your respect? These people whose opinion you're worried about. Remember whose opinion matters. Your opinion matters of yourself and maybe a select few other people around you. But beyond that, I'm not so sure it's so wise to spend a lot of time considering the opinions of other people. Point number four, schedule stillness in your life. How often have I told you about the benefits of meditation? How often have I mentioned on this channel, you're probably sick of hearing me say it, how often have I mentioned how incredibly valuable meditation can be in specifically confronting and overcoming something like retroactive jealousy? Scheduling stillness, which is one term for meditation, it's a great way to gain the ability to really harness your innate ability, believe it or not, to disconnect from thoughts that aren't serving you, to immediately refocus your attention elsewhere, to immediately reframe thoughts that aren't serving you. To get that sense of inner stillness and inner tranquility and inner peace of mind that will help you, for example, deal with the opinions of others, that will help you filter out the noise in your head from what is actually true, from the information that's constantly going, you know, rattling around your head all day, sorting the wheat from the chaff, sorting out what is actually valuable, what is real, what is true, and what is complete fiction, what is fantasy. Schedule stillness in your life. This is one of the best things I've ever done for myself, for my sanity, for my mental well-being, for my relationships. Highly encourage you to do the same. Point number five, find the beauty in everyday life. How often do you practice gratitude for your partner? Hopefully you do it a lot because again, this is one of the best steps we can take toward having a happier life, toward having a better relationship. And as well, confronting and overcoming retroactive jealousy as well. Frequently people are hung up on the idea that they wish their partner had had certain different experiences in their past or they hadn't had certain experiences in their past. Sometimes people will wish that they'd met their partner earlier in life. You know, if I'd met them before they met that idiot, <laughs> then I wouldn't have retroactive jealousy or so the narrative goes. Instead, reframe this. Oh my God, I'm such a lucky person. Look at this extraordinary creature across the dinner table from me. I'm here with them right now. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this magical? And again, coming back to being grateful for the present moment, this night will never repeat itself. This dinner will never repeat itself. I'll never get this time back that I have with my partner right now. How beautiful they look, how beautiful this moment is. Appreciate the glory of the present moment because it really is beautiful and it will never return. Point number six, take the view from above. Will this stuff matter in five years? Will retroactive jealousy matter to you in a year from now? Will this be the stuff that you'll be thinking about when you're on your deathbed? Take the 50,000 foot view from above on your current situation. Is this really worth it? Is this important? Am I prepared to live like this for the next five, 10, 20, 30 years? Or do I wanna do something about this now so I can focus on what's actually important in life? So I can take on new, bigger, and better challenges aside from retroactive jealousy. This is eating up so much of my energy, my attention, my day. Isn't there more that I could and should be focusing on in life? Isn't there bigger and better challenges that I should be starting to approach? Take the view from above to get some perspective on this problem, to really get some perspective on whether this problem is as big a problem as maybe you're making it out to be, and whether you're prepared to waste who knows how many more days, weeks, months, years fighting these imagined demons rather than taking the necessary steps to confront and overcome them. Take the view from above. Point number seven, live by a code. 
I often get emails from guys who seem to have a certain code of ethics, shall we call it, for their wife or girlfriend. And they're often very frustrated when it seems like their girlfriend or wife doesn't really live up to this code. But how often have they really thought deeply and really deeply considered their own personal code? My perspective is a lot of these guys don't have the code that they think they have because if they actually were living by their own self-described code, they would have made different choices. They would have been with different women. They would have not ended up writing to me complaining that the world isn't living up to their code. Living by a code is extremely important and I have to do it in my own life. For example, I run a business. I have to fire people sometimes. Is it fun? No. Do I get emotional about it? No. Because if someone's not living up to my own expectations, that's totally fine, but it just means we're not a good match. Goodbye, God bless. It doesn't have to be an emotional experience. So living by a code is absolutely important. Again, I often tell retroactive jealousy sufferers, get very, very clear about your values. What is acceptable to you? What is not acceptable and why? That's the most crucial question in this whole journey. Why? Why is that not acceptable to you? It's not enough to just say, I could never be with a woman who has been with, let's say, 10 guys. Okay, well, why not? If you don't have a really satisfying answer to that question that is logical and rational and makes sense to you, you might not be living by the code that you think you're living. Your code might not be as strong as you imagine it to be. Live by a code is good advice. So consider carefully your own code and then live by it. And finally, reflect often. If you're in the trenches with retroactive jealousy, it's a very good practice to consistently ask yourself what's working and what's not. How can I do more of what's working and less of what isn't? What is making a difference in my journey, in my healing, in my recovery, and what is not? What are the mistakes that I seem to be getting hung up on that I keep making over and over and over again? And how can I resist and avoid making those mistakes moving forward? Am I getting closer to where I want to be? Or am I getting further away? Regularly take those moments to really check in what's working, what's not. It might be time to re-strategize. It might be time to adopt some new perspectives, some new techniques, some new exercises. Reflect often and don't stop until you get the answers that you need about who you are and where you're going and where you want to go in the future. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to this. And if you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. Make sure you leave a comment letting me know what you think. I'd be particularly interested to hear your favorite point. Uh, from this list of eight. And please make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you very soon.